welcome to Hoffman's Hunting Heritage. Load your quiver, camo up, and join us for another great episode of Outdoors Action. Hoffman's Hunting Heritage is brought to you by Advanced Takedown Tree Stands, Langea, Sunrise Archery, author W.C. Hoffman, and Tribe Grunt Calls. Here is your host, Bill Hoffman. Hey y'all, this is Crystal Mahoney with Whitetail Widowmakers, and you're listening to Hoffman's Hunting Heritage. Hello and welcome back to another thrilling episode of Hoffman's Hunting Heritage. I'm your host, Bill Hoffman, and this week's show is all about 2017's turkey success stories. On this week's show, I will tell you about my short but exciting successful turkey hunt. And then later in segment two, we'll have Jake Hacker back on the line from the Everyday Outdoorsman with an incredible hunt that he actually pulled off. I can't believe the details of his hunt. You're going to want to stay tuned for that. But first of all, let's hop right into my hunt. This year in Michigan, I chose to go for the late season. The way our licenses here in Michigan work in the spring is you get one spring bird and you can pick one of two seasons. There's the early season, which is April 15th to like May 1st, I believe, or April 30th, and then May 1st through May 31st. So the second season kind of does a few things for you. It's it's private property only. So if you want to hunt the state land, you got to hunt early. But the other thing it does for you is for guys like me, I'm busy. And the busyness actually played into my hunt. But I like having that full month. I like having 30 days. You know, if something comes up and you can't hunt one day, you can slide in the next. And that for me as a family man who works 40 hours plus rights plus has this podcast makes sense. You know, if something comes up and you can't slide out to the woods, there's always another day. However, this year, (laughs) as you're going to hear, well, I already said it was short, so let's get right into that. So May 1st was my opening day, and uh, I normally work nights. I'm a a third shift officer, and I was, uh, the first week of May, we had some training all week. So I was, uh, you know, coming out of the dark putting on, you know, not being a vampire anymore, putting on my sunglasses and being awake during the day at work. So all week I had training. Of course, opening week of turkey season for me, and I'm stuck at work. (laughs) And so I hadn't actually planned on being able to hunt until the first weekend, so full five days into my season. So what had happened was, I had set something up with the boss man so that I could leave early Monday, not to hunt, but to coach. See, my son is a playing t-ball and I coach his team. And not only was it uh, his game, it was his first game. And his first game started literally at the minute I was supposed to get out of training. So I had worked something up with the chief and the chief said, you know, it's an important moment in your son's life. And thankfully to, you know, to him and to my sergeant, they uh, were very understanding and they they cut me loose. So I got out of there in plenty of time. I got home and by the time I got home, we had one hell of a thunderstorm. Thunder, rain, just nasty. And you know what? The game was canceled. So (laughs) I had gotten out of work early. I was home. I had nothing to do since the game was canceled. So... What should I do? Well, it didn't take very long for me to remember that it was the opening day of turkey season and I threw my camo on and headed into the woods. I actually sat my butt down in a cut cornfield next to a, I call it a logging road, but it's not a logging road because the property's never been logged, but it's basically a two track path through the woods. And the turkey just use it as a highway. They roost in the woods and they feed in the field and they just run up and down that that path. That's the the path of least resistance. Plus, another thing is know your property. So I have a drainage ditch that that path crosses, and it is one of the few ways the turkeys won't have to either go down and get wet in the drainage ditch or fly over the ditch. Every single time a turkey is lazy, you can pattern them. They don't want to fly. They don't want to hop anything like fences or ditches or ravines. 
they will take the land bridge. So I was set up on the land bridge. I put out a hen decoy and a fanned out Jake. And just my thought was, you know, it's raining. And whenever it's raining, the turkeys like to be out in the fields for a few different reasons. First is it knocks a lot of the bugs down out of the air onto the ground. So turkeys eat bugs <laughs> so they can uh, walk through the field and find the bugs. Another reason is it drives those earthworms up out of the ground. Turkeys like earthworms. So it's a twofold situation right there. The other reason is when it rains, it kind of takes away their hearing a little bit, you know, with the, the pitter pattering, the the water hitting the ground and the leaves and the wind associated. So they kind of like to be out in the open. You know, they don't want to be sheltered, you know, perhaps maybe like a deer would be. They want to be out in the open so that they can use their greatest asset even more, which is their eyes. They can see something coming from a long way away. So I figured with it raining, they were going to be headed to that field before the roost. And by the time I got there, you know, it wasn't pouring rain. And but it wasn't misty either. It wasn't in between rain. It wasn't super comfortable to sit in. And I was, you know, I had my rain gear on, so I was dry. But, you know, it is what it is. So uh sat down, do, do a few calls. No gobbles. Wasn't expecting gobbles in the afternoon, but just kind of wanted to let the turkeys know that a few other turkeys had already made it to the field. And you know, about 20 minutes went by and I saw a lone hen come out of the corner. Now, I had kind of expected the turkeys to come down that road like I talked about. However, they also will come out of the corner of this field. It's a corn, a cut cornfield. They will come out of the corner and, and then come down to the road, walk up the road, and then fly up to their roost from there. So I figured that's pretty much exactly what's going to happen. And I'm going to have a turkey parade if anything's following her. And guess what, guys? <laughs> it was definitely something following her. So I um, keep watching, and here comes another hen. And they worked down the road, and it kind of curved behind me. And all I said, if there's a, if there's a Tom there, um, we're going to be in business. And I look up, and there he was. Hey, Tom, he was in half strut when I first saw him. And I saw his big bouncing beard, so I knew legal bird. and. I was set, my decoys were set up about 15 yards um, past the road. So, you know, if he turned and walked down the road, uh, I was fine to shoot him there. Or if he came straight out to my decoys, it would have, you know, been picture perfect. Well, turkeys do what turkeys do. <laughs> so he got to about 25 yards and he had hit full strut a couple times and he was drumming and spurring and he was looking for a fight. So, which kind of surprised me because he already had two other hens and I guess he just decided that, you know, three is better than two. So he's drumming and spurring all puffed up and, and he gets to about 20, yeah, maybe 18, 19 yards, but there's still, he's kind of behind a bush. So I need him to come another three or four yards closer to my decoys and I'll blast him. Or I need him to go three or four yards towards the, um, road and I get him too. The only thing that wouldn't work is if he headed out into the field and by the way he was acting there was nothing there was no chance that was going to happen. So I pretty much knew as long as I did my part I had a dead turkey. And that is exactly how it played out. He kind of looked uh at my uh decoy. Uh he looked at the hen, he looked at the jake, he puffed up, he showed off a little bit. And then he looked down the road, and I think he realized that his two ladies were well, leaving him, <laughs> leaving him behind. And uh, so basically it was like, well, I could take these two ladies that are a sure thing, or I can scrap it up with this guy and lose my other two ladies and be with his hen. So I think he, he went for the two is better than one option, and he kind of just, you know, he putted a few times and was just like, ah, forget you. And uh, he came out of full strut and he started walking towards the road and I moved just a little bit and he turned and he looked at me and right then I let him have it and I dropped him at you know, about 33 yards. So it was uh, one shot, one kill, perfect flopped. I did just like Johnny B. Taxidermy told me to on this show. I let him flop for a few minutes, didn't bother, you know, going out and stepping on his head or wringing his neck and, uh, you know. Got some uh, turkey breast for the table, 
Got a nice turkey fan mount. I did it myself. That's my first time doing it myself, but Johnny had given me so many good tips. And, you know, I figured if it doesn't turn out great, I've got a fantastic taxidermist to take it to to fix it. <laughs> you know, so it was kind of a win-win situation for me. And um, with these successful turkey hunting stories that I'm doing here on the show, I, I'm going to ask each of the hunters, you know, what the key was to their success. What factor made the biggest determination in them being able to kill their bird and I think with me it's pretty clear for me it was persistence it was going out when it's raining it wasn't comfortable it was muddy I walked across a huge ass cornfield to get to my spot it there was nothing easy about my hunt other than it didn't last very long. In fact, it was it lasted 27 minutes. That's how long my turkey season lasted, 27 minutes. And, um, you know, but the persistence to get out there, you know, like I said, I choose the 30-day long season because it gives me 30 days. So if one day, you know, something's not happening or it's not perfect, you still have 29 more days. And you know what? I had 29 more days, but this season, I or this day, it was just, it was almost ordained. It was just perfect. You know, I had gotten out of work early. The game, the ball game had been canceled. I figured I might as well make the most of my time. And I got out there and, you know, it wasn't a morning hunt where you're pulling them off the roost. It was, there was no gobbles. I, I never heard a gobble. You know, so it was just uh, just worked out perfectly. And persistence was knowing that they would be there in the rain. And well, that would be scouting. But persistence was knowing, you know, that I can't kill them if I'm on my couch, basically. So even though it wasn't perfect, it ended up being a perfect hunt. And my Tom was pretty respectable. I believe he was uh, two, maybe a three year old. Based on his weight, he was 24 pounds, but, you know, nine and three quarter inch beard and seven eighths inch spurs. So he was probably a two year old bird. But, you know, if the world was full of dumb two year old Toms, I'd be a happy man. So <laughs> hang tight. We're going to run to a commercial break real quick. And when we come back, we're going to have the everyday outdoorsman Jake Hacker with a thrilling, unbelievable turkey hunt. And, you know, when I saw the pictures of how he pulled it off, I just couldn't believe it. I'm not going to spoil it. I'm going to leave it up to him. So we'll be right back after this break. <laughs> When only five days is your season. You need every advantage you can get. The new takedown from Advanced Tree Stands. A three-piece modular design with its own integrated ratchet system. Gets you up in a tree faster, safer than ever before. Takedown from Advanced. Langia.com, your home for unique products that fit the outdoors lifestyle. Langia.com is the leading online social marketplace for all the needs of today's busy outdoorsmen and women with a carefully curated list of unique products from all American companies and small businesses. Langia is truly uniting the outdoors. Next time you find yourself shopping for gear or gifts, make sure you start your search from the comfort of your tree stand, hunting blind, or bass boat with Langia.com. Make Sunrise Archery and Outdoors your source for all your archery needs. Bows, crossbows, and accessories from Elite, Ten Point, Mission, Matthews, Botech, Parker, and Prime. At Sunrise, you'll get the best customer service from a team of specialized professionals. You can even try it before you buy it and learn from the top archers. Come to the professionals for all your archery needs. Sunrise Archery and Outdoors, Tory Road, Fenton. Once in a while, a design comes along that defies convention and challenges the way we think about performance. Missions are built from the ground up to embody the power and precision of an apex predator. Explore the unique features that make mission easier to draw, maneuver, and shoot accurately. There 
was a time when man could communicate with all animals. But we have since forgotten their language. Tribe Grunt Calls is a new company with an old heritage, providing affordable but high quality and great looking grunt calls to hunters like you. For more information on how you can join the tribe, visit tribegruntcalls.com. Welcome back to segment two of this week's episode. Here is your host, Bill Hoffman. Hi, my name is Dr. Brian Hall with True North Chiropractic, and you're listening to one of my favorite podcasts, Hoffman's Hunting Heritage. All right, and welcome back to segment two of this week's show. We're talking about turkey success stories of 2017, and as promised, I've got Jacob Hacker from The Everyday Outdoorsman. You can look him up on Facebook, just put in The Everyday Outdoorsman, or you can go right to his website, teohunts.com. Jacob has had a successful 2017 as well, and he's got a heck of a story to share with us about it. What's going on, my brother? Hey, how you doing, Billy? Congrats on a uh, a good Michigan bird, man. You know, 27 minutes. <laughs> it, <laughs> it didn't take long. It's one of those years where I think I should have had a multi-state tour planned. Oh, wait, I did. But, you know, <laughs> gymnastics and life and being a dad sometimes gets in the way, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. But enough about my hunt. Everybody heard about my hunt in segment one. I think yours is uh, pretty darn interesting. So why don't you just uh, tell us a little bit about what happened on your uh, successful turkey hunt so far? Yeah, man. So, uh, so opening day, I, I had kind of debated on, uh, whether to take my, my kid with me or not. And, uh, for those that don't follow me, I've got a two year old boy and, uh, he's still pretty young to be out in the woods, but he comes out and, you know, checks deer cameras with me and stuff. And yeah, I figured it'd, it'd be fun to get him out in the woods and hear some, hear some gobbles and maybe get to see a turkey. And my, my goal for him was just to take him someplace he could hear some gobbles because I knew that'd get him excited. Uh, he's got one of those you know, Drake's Adventure books, the the Sound Touch books that that gobble and it. He just loves it, man. So I knew he'd love getting out there. Um, I tried to take him out earlier in the year, you know, before season. Uh, but in Ohio, you can't call uh, for a few weeks before season, so sometimes it's hard to get the birds fired up when they're on the roost and the weather just wouldn't right. So I said, you know, you know, screw it. We'll go opening day. I'll take him opening day to a spot where I, I don't have a ton of birds, but I got a few birds and at least let him hear something and. Uh, Man, we got out there uh, opening morning. We got out there a little bit late. Uh, apparently, it takes longer to get a two-year-old ready than I thought to go hunting <laughs> yeah. at six in the morning. So you think? Uh, <laughs> but no, luckily we had a we had a short flat walk back there. We we walked back to where I thought we'd we'd be able to hear a long way, but we wouldn't be able to see very much, and you know, really wouldn't hear anything gobbling off the roost. And uh, I, I had texted my wife. Uh, told her we weren't hearing anything. We might go try a different spot. I think it was like 6:43, if I remember right, what the, what the timestamp said. And Rise put the phone in my pocket. I heard a bird got just forever away, and and Reed didn't hear it. So we uh, kind of walked over to the edge of a ridge, just knowing how the property runs. Kind of there, there's a road that runs uh, all the way, old logging road in this property, all the way back to a field that's actually across the road, which is where I think the birds were and cut at them a few times and they gobbled and they were closer and called again and they gobbled and they were closer. So we set up real quick and uh, I got Reed set behind a bush. And uh, uh, the interesting part of this hunt was I'd taken my bow because I didn't want to, I, I didn't want to hurt his eardrums, you know, taking a shotgun next to a two-year-old I didn't think was the best idea. Hold on. I, uh, I got to stop you right there. Are you telling <laughs> me, <laughs> wait a minute, <laughs> you have a two-year-old you're bow hunting and you're not using a blind no man we're just just running gun that's how i like to hunt you know you <laughs> you've hunted with me before you know i don't like hunting out of blinds for turkeys i just hate it it's not fun for me i like to be able to move uh you know honestly i debated even bringing a weapon on this hunt I, all i wanted was for him to get to hear something right um but yeah so i grabbed the bow um 
figure what the heck, you know, we'll, we'll give it a shot at least. And uh, fortunately, it worked out well because where we set up at, there was a little bush that Reed could hide behind, but he could he still had a really cool view of the of the road that I thought the turkeys were going to come in on. And, uh, you know, just a couple calls and shut up and they gobbled, fired up. They came into about 30 yards and there were two big mature toms that strutted for a little bit. I uh, cut at them just to get them to put on a show for Reed and they double and triple gobbled. And, That's awesome. Uh, one, one of them came to a clear shot at 20 yards. I was able to draw back and bust him right there. And, uh, and he, he ran about 10 feet and fell over and the other one flew off. So it was, a uh, it was an awesome hunt, man. Reed got to see. Got to see him come in and strut and, and gobble. And, you know, for me, it was a cool hunt. It, even if he wouldn't have been there, it was a really cool hunt. But, um, you know, it lasted. I think I said that I texted my wife at like 643. It was 648 when I texted her and told her we killed a turkey. So <laughs> it was it was quick. My two-year-old didn't have to sit still very long. Just one of those mornings where everything works perfect. Yeah. And, you know, I was reading uh, your wife's blog and she had kind of told the story on her end, you know, not seeing anything. Bird's dead. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just, just, just like you had said, but that's really cool. So, and not only is it cool just to get a bird, you know, with your son there, but you got a nice bird. What are the uh, t- particulars on that uh, time you got? You know, I didn't weigh him. He was a good two year old bird. He was uh, probably in the 20, 21 pound range. He had a 10 uh, inch beard and inch and a spurs. So he was a, he's a respectable bird anywhere around, but just a just a two year old out here. They get a lot bigger than that. Yeah, heck, you know my two. That's bigger than my two year old bird. <laughs> but <laughs> my bird had a lot of weight. My bird actually came in at twenty four pounds. But uh, wow, you know, just shy of ten inches on the beard and just shy of an inch on the spurs. But you know. That's the way the cookie crumbles. <laughs> I, you know, I sat there and I saw a beard and I said, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's about how my judgment goes on turkeys, too. Yeah. So tell me, what was uh, Reed's overall reaction to the whole the whole hunt, everything? Oh, man, he was pumped, man. He uh, So I said there were two of them. One of them flew away and the. Uh, he was he was just dying to go get that other bird. He we found the we found the one turkey and he played with it for a minute. He kept saying, "Dad, let's go get the other one. Let's go get the other one." And uh, so we we actually did. I, I we took the uh, the turkey back to the truck and went back out in the woods and called for a little bit and got the other bird to gobble it and got it into probably about a hundred yards. We never could see it and it, it I assume busted him running around. He was so excited at that point, but. Yeah, well, uh, he doesn't understand that, you know, you can't hunt again <laughs> until, <laughs> until the next day. But it is still fun to go out and play with him. Oh, yeah, man. It's it's a blast to get him fired up. You know, and he's hooked. He's asked me to take him, you know, almost every morning when he when he wakes up. And, of course, I work second shift. So if I want to go turkey hunting, I can get him up and go turkey hunting. We've went a couple times since then. And uh, I think he's I think he might be hooked, man. Now, he understands that you don't kill a turkey 100 percent of the time now. <laughs> <laughs> Man, he figured it out on the second hunt, and it was, it was just pitiful. We hunted uh, the second day. We hunted for about four hours, and, and we we saw a turkey right off the bat, but it was with a hand and about 100 yards out. And So he got to watch it strut again, didn't hear a gobble all morning, uh, hunted until about 11. And when we pulled in the driveway, he realized we didn't get a turkey, man. He, he stuck that lower lip out and kind of pouted a little bit, and we had to have the we had to have the reality talk about how we don't get one every time. But is, is that the same talk you had with me the last time I left Ohio? Yeah, exact same talk, Billy. He's just cuter. <laughs> He's just cuter. I like that. And I'll agree. Uh, that's good. Well, that's pretty cool, man. That's, that's a cool hunting story. That's a cool fatherhood story. That's, you know, even though he's two, I guarantee you that's something he'll never forget. And, uh, again, just thank you for, uh, a coming on the show again. I think this is what your third or fourth time, uh, yeah. B being the kind of father that we all should be in getting our youth involved in the outdoors. And let's not pass up the fact that, you know, we never want to say taking our kids in the wood is a sacrifice because some, but some guys do look at it that way. You know, like you said, you, really contemplated not even taking a weapon in the woods of course i'm i know you're glad that you did but it's all about just spending that quality time and and getting them involved and you know some people it takes a long time for them to find their hunt and their hunting buddy and guys like me and jake well we're raising ours so um i just you know thanks for being a cool dude 
Hey, I appreciate it, man. All right. And for those of you that are listening, uh, you guys need to head on over to Facebook for two reasons. You need to hop on to the Hoffman's Hunting Heritage Facebook page and leave some comments. Let's talk about, tell us about your successful turkey stories. And if you want to share that story, I'm going to be doing quite a few of these type of episodes. We'll get you on. We'll chat about your hunt. And um, the one thing I forgot to ask you, Jake, is um, what was the main key to your success? in this hunt if you break it down this one thing above everything else like for me mine was persistence mine was going hunting in the rain a lot of guys don't like to go out get wet what would be your main key to success for my listeners to learn from uh man besides being really really lucky um i I scout a lot you know that you know i'm constantly out there scouting and, and looking and this this particular property actually never had turkeys on it the spring um, there's a field about two miles away that all the turkeys congregate in. It's where they live at. And fortunately for me this year, because it was so warm, the, uh, the farmers were able to spray the fields early, which kills all the, kills all the weeds, which gets rid of all the bugs, which means the turkeys aren't going to be there to eat. Right. Um, and the turkeys kind of moved about two weeks before season. The turkeys moved from that field that they're always in right along the roadside. They moved into my woodlot that I got permission to hunt and it broke them up. And that's what that's what made that spot worthwhile. And had I not constantly been out there scouting, you know, never would have known that the the farmers would hit those fields and the turkeys had left. And I'd been hunting uh, up a pretty steep mountain that I definitely wouldn't get a two year old up. So just paying attention, kind of knowing what the birds do in your area, and and always scouting. You know, even when it's not hunting season, driving around, always knowing your area, knowing what your animals are doing. It uh, it definitely boosts your success. Perfect. Amen. And uh, tell us about your Facebook page and website one more time before we let you go. All right. So you can find me on Facebook. It's facebook.com forward slash the everyday outdoorsman. That's probably the best way to get hold of me. You can send me a message on there or you can visit my website, teohunts.com. And you still got room? Are you still booking people for whitetail hunts this fall? We got a couple spots left for whitetail hunts this fall. Pretty well booked up. Uh, but you can get a hold of me, see what dates we got. And we've got some giant deer chicks this year. All right, folks, you heard it right there. TEOHunts.com. I've hunted with Jake. I will be hunting with him the first week of November again this year. Now, if he can get a turkey with a two-year-old on the ground with a bow and no blind, he sure as heck can get a guy like me a buck. And that means he can probably get you one too. So if we do our part, Jake will put you in the right areas. 100% confidence in him. T.E.O. Hunts, the everyday outdoorsman. Congratulations on your bird. You still got one tag left. We might have to get you back for another story. Hey, hopefully we're that lucky, Billy. All right, great. And you know what? I'm going to put you right on the spot. Jake, take us out. Get outdoors. It's a wild place to be. I'd expect him to get it right. It's his third time back. Thanks again, everyone. And we'll see you back next week with more Turkey Success Stories. Thank you for listening to this episode of Hoffman's Hunting Heritage. Get outdoors. It's a wild place to be.